We have big news coming in from Albania, from the European Club Cup. Nihal Sarin has won his game in the second round and has crossed 2700 ELO on the live ratings. That makes him the ninth Indian to do so. I'm going to tell you all about this historic moment at the end of this video. But first, let's have a look at the game which made Nihal a super GM, you know, by crossing the 2700 mark. Now, Nihal is playing against Polyus, a very, very talented grandmaster. Uh, and Nihal has the black pieces here and his opponent opens the game with 1d4. Nihal goes knight f6, c4, e6. And we have the Nimzo Indian. So it's very interesting because Nihal won his last game against Bosiochic in the first round uh, by playing with the white pieces against Nimzo. And now he plays with the black pieces. So Nimzo being the opening that he's used to cross 2700. E3, C5 played, Bishop D3, Knight C6. And now the knight comes out to f3. In fact, this is the line I played a lot with both colors uh, when I was active. And the move I used to like was bishop c3, bc3 and d6. Putting my pawns on dark squares and then later on playing e5 to open up this bishop. It's a very interesting line and you can check out the game of Spassky Fisher that happened in this line. Amazing game from their match. Okay. Nihal goes d5. This is also a very classical way to play castles. Now he takes on c4. Bishop takes and castles it out. a3 played. And generally there are two ways to play here. The main sort of way to play was take, take and play queen c7. And then later on you may want to break with e5 or even play b6, bb7. But Nihal goes for bishop a5. Now, the important thing to note here is that if white plays d takes c5 and wants to cling on to his pawn with b4, now Nihal will take on c3. Pawn takes and then black is left with, uh, white is left with this slightly ruined structure. So, Polyus plays bishop d3 and Nihal now plays queen e e7 maybe not the most accurate move according to the engines they prefer to take on d4 but queen e7 is not the best because white now finds a very good move which is knight e4 and maybe one of the things that white is saying is that hey look now your bishop is doing absolutely nothing here and my idea is to take here and play b4 so nihal is already under some pressure he took on d4 by the way, there is a game of Artemiev and Firuja in this position. But um, that continued e takes d4. And that was also the move that uh, Polyus played in this game. b4 would have been the best move. And actually, I'm quite interested to know what Nihal would have done here. Uh, because if bishop b6, then now b5, very strong move. Attacking the knight, the knight moves away. And then knight takes, queen takes, and ed4 with the idea of bishop g5 coming in. And if you play a move like h6, then bishop d2. Already this knight is not very well placed here. And white is clearly better. You know, bishop could jump to b4 and so on. So this b4 would have been a stronger move, but white played ed. And now Nihal played h6. Very important move, by the way, because the threat was to come bishop g5 after ed4. The bishop was opened up, so he plays h6. And now queen e2, rook comes to d8, attacking this pawn. Uh, white defends it. And now Nihal plays his knight to d5. So Nihal has now managed to get um, quite some stability in his position. Rook c1 and I like this next maneuver that he goes for. Bishop d7. Very Karpovian. Uh, you, your bishop is not very active here but it will come to e8 where it is out of all harm's way. And the rook can come to c8 and we'll also notice how Nihal activates this bishop on e8. So after knight c5, he drops the bishop back defending the pawn on b7. Bishop b1 and now comes rook c8. Queen d3, he wants to enter in here and deliver a mate. So 
f5 very powerful move blocking that diagonal and also notice how the bishop has opened up here so uh, here white should have been very careful about what's happening and maybe uh, there was a need to be slightly more aggressive maybe g4 is a move that should be thought of yes it looks very scary but maybe it's in the spirit of the position b4 bishop b6 and now rook e1 was perhaps not the best idea because now Nihal plays his bishop to h5 suddenly it's trouble time because there is pressure here there is pressure here there is pressure here a lot of pressure from black side bishop d2 played it's not a, not so easy to figure out what to do if you go knight e5 then i can simply take pawn takes and now knight takes b4 unleashing an attack on the queen this way so he went bd2 and now nihal chopped the knight off if you take with the queen then knight d4 is a free pawn so that's the reason why he took back g takes on f3 uh, notice that if you are a bit greedy and try to win this pawn then black has the very nice little move bishop e4 uh, giving him a winning advantage so g takes f3 was played and now nihal played another strong move bishop c5 the e6 pawn was a bit weak so he took the knight rook takes and now came the move queen f6 uh, although white has the bishop pair here they are not so good the knights are beautifully positioned the d4 pawn is weak bishop e3 played and now b6 kicking the knight away rook c1 and nihal tremendously uh, alert here tactically goes for knight takes on d4 it's a great move knight c7 was also a fantastic move would have given black a great advantage but he took here and uh, it's very interesting to see the tactics now so first things first you can't take on c8 because of the check here and if you come to g2 to attack the knight i'll take on e1 with a check and then even win the queen and if you go let's say king h1 then here i can simply take back and i'm doing very well so rook c8 is not possible bishop d4 is interesting move and i give a check king here and rook c1 black wins because you win material queen takes d4 is the best move uh, in this relatively i mean relatively best in this bad position and this is where Nihal's calculation was so brilliant. He took on c1, rook takes, and now took on d4, bishop takes, and this classy move knight f4. Uh, it's a very nice move, unleashing an attack on the bishop, threatening knight e2 check. You can't protect against all these threats. Uh, and that's the reason why Polyus now gives up his bishop with bishop b6. He gets at least one pawn in return because the rook is attacked. And uh, Nihal takes back, king f1, and the rook jumps into d2. You will see that the rook is beautifully positioned attacking f2. The knight is also strongly positioned, so Nihal is very close to winning this game. And if you remember, Nihal was on 2699 before this game, so very close to 2700. However, uh, Polyus fights really hard here. He goes king e1 check good move king f1 and now rook b2 bishop c2 played b5 so nihal improves his position rook a2 he could have also brought his king in which was very logical but nihal got a bit uh, greedy he went for the pawn a4 takes king d2 rook b2 and now uh, by the way if king c3 there is a3 so he played rook b1 and now takes bishop takes. This has become very sharp now. And here the winning move for black was king f7. And the point is that this king now comes in to stop this pawn. So if you play the move b5, I can go king e7, king here, king b4, knight d5 check. Uh, by the way, if you take the pawn, there is knight c3 check and you lose the bishop. So you go king a5, a3 and black wins here. Uh, king f7, if uh, king c3, then check king c4, king f6, nice move, b5, king e5, king comes up, 
a3 and when you play b6 i take take and king f4 winning all these pawns and then my pawns are very strong on the king side so this is another way in which uh, nihal could have won but he actually didn't find this move king f7 and makes a mistake here he goes knight d5 and this gives white a great chance to hold on and polius does find it he plays b5 very good move <clears throat> King comes up to f7, bishop a2, good move. Knight b6 is important because if you go king e7, then I take. Pawn takes, king c3, king b4, and I'm going to win this pawn. So that's the reason why he had to go knight b6. King c3, king e7, king b4, king d6, f4, very strong move, fixing the pawns. g5 played by Nihal. He played king f5 attacking the knight, king c5 defends the knight, pawn takes, pawn takes, and now bishop takes on e6. So, white is now equal, but if you see carefully, black's knight has trapped the white king. Now, the king cannot go, the pawn will queen if you win this pawn, a2. So, in a way, white is tied up, but at the same time, black is also tied up because, you know, you can't make much progress because the moment you move the knight, the b pawn runs. So bishop b3 is a good move here by uh, Polius. f4, Nihal tries to improve his position. Bishop a2, he waits. Knight c4 check. And it's important to note you can't take. Take and play b6 because a2, b7 and a1 comes with a check and black wins. So that's the reason why he had to now decide where to move his king to a4 or a6. I would like you to take a moment here and think what would you do? Important moment and actually the moment which would decide whether Nihal would cross 2700 or not today. King a4 was the best move and would have given white a draw because now the threat is bishop takes on um, c4 and king a3. So if you play knight e5 then I take and there's no real way in which you can, uh, even though you are two pawns up, white king comes in and stops the pawns here and it's a draw. So this is one way and if you play g4, I take take king a3 and king b3 is also a draw. Knight d6 is possible but I take king b2 and again a draw. So it was a draw but uh, king a4 was the best. Instead he goes king a6. And now Nihal is winning. He pushes f3. Fantastic move. Improving his position. White can't do a thing because he can't push b6. I'll take it. You can't move your king. I take this. You have to move your bishop. So he goes bishop b3. Nihal improves his position even further. Bishop a2. And now goes king d4. King b7. King comes back. King here. And now knight d6. Finally, making some progress. Attacking the pawn. b6 came in. King d4, king a5. Uh, of course, it's important to note that if you play king b, uh, sorry, pawn to b7, I just take, take, and play king d3. Next move, I'm coming in and winning this pawn and queening. So that's the reason why he played king a5, but in came a check. Again, the same point. If you play bishop c4, I take on c4, and if you play b7, a2, queen, queen check. King here, I give another check, you move your king, I take, take, king d3 and I win the pawn and I win the game. So that's the reason why he went king b4 and now knight takes b6, takes knight c4 check. You can't take the knight because take, take, the king will enter here and black wins. So that's the reason why king a4 was played, knight b2 check and now at this point Polyus resigned because knight here and take on f2 is going to finish off the game so a very very nice win for nihal sarin and a huge huge congratulations to him uh i'm going to make a separate video on his journey uh, generally like how i do for uh, most of these youngsters whom i have we have been following since a long time but here's a very short uh, sort of going down the memory lane this was taken in 2014 by Ni uh, by amruta uh, look at Nihal's stare. You know, that is his very famous stare. And this is taken today uh, after this win. 
that is on 2nd of October, uh, Nihal after he beat Polyas at the European Club Cup by Niki Riga. This picture and you can still see the, sh the stare. It's very similar. Uh, a big congratulations to uh, Nihal's family, Dr. Sh uh, Sarin, Dr. Shijin and Neha who is Nihal's sister. In fact, we have been following their journey since a very young age. Um, we have a video on our channel where Dr. Sarin talks about all the advice which uh, you know uh, can be given from a chess dad and also Dr. Shijin gives advice from a chess mom's perspective. Both are doctors. Uh, Nihal also has been very close to his sister Neha and these are some of the pictures there. She's been a rock solid support in his career. Uh, Banjan, who is his manager, Priyadarshan Banjan, from many, many years, has been also a big support to Nihal's career. And not to forget Akshay Kalpa, who signed up Nihal in 2019 when the boy was a grandmaster. Very, very talented. It's taken four years for Nihal to cross 2700 and become a super GM, but it wouldn't have been possible without Akshay Kalpa. Here's a picture of Nihal signing the contract. Uh, Shashi Kumar, the, the CEO of Akshay Kalpa, who had this vision to support Nihal Sarin. And so Nihal becomes the ninth Indian to cross 2700. We had Anand, Shashi, Hari, Vidit, Adiban, Gukesh, Arjun, Prag and Nihal. Uh, the four youngsters have all now crossed 2700. And here we have mentioned nine Indians have crossed 2700. Who will be the 10th? And we have SL Narayanan 2651, Arvind Chidambaram 2649, Raunak Sadhwani 2641 and Aryan Chopra 2634. Will any of them cross 2700 next or will it be someone who is still in their 2500s and moving up? We will see. For now, a huge, huge congratulations for Nihal for winning. And crossing 2700, he's now 2702.5. And I'm very, very thrilled and happy that he's managed to cross this. For now, this is Sagar Shah signing off. Please do join me in congratulating Nihal and writing a wonderful comment below for his achievement. I'm sure he will read it after this tournament. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.